Welcome everybody to a new episode of the Pokemon Podcast. Today's episode, Battle Builds. Okie dokie. For all you newcomers, our exciting Battle Build series is where we train the same Pokemon in secret and reveal our strategies live. Our goal is to inspire out-of-the-box thinking and showcase the boundless possibilities of Pokemon training. It's all about embracing creativity and showing that there's no one way to train a Pokemon. Let's dive into it. Ogie Dogi was the runner-up to our poll for who we should do a video next. Ogie Dogi is our canine compatriot of the loyal three Pokemon. It is a poison fighting type, which makes it four times weak to psychic, two times weak to flying and ground, takes half damage from fighting, poison, rock, grass, and dark, and takes one quarter damage from bug. Its abilities are Toxic Chain, which badly poisons any target of its move unless it is targeting itself. And its hidden ability is Guard Dog, where it boosts the attacks that, if it's intimidated, cannot be switched out by force. Its base stats are 555, with hit points at 88, attack at 128, defense of 115, special attack of 58, special defense of 86, and a speed of 80. My boy is using that hidden ability that you mentioned, that guard dog, because, you know, those kids next door, they always be coming over in my yard to get those baseballs. So I have to sick old Hercules out on them from the sandlot. Oh my god. With EVs of 252 in HP, 252 attack and only 4 speed, this adamant pup is actually going to come through and make sure that he keeps those pups off my yard. Even wearing an assault vest to add that bulk, he's going to be a hard to remove, boy. Swinging around a poison jab, a drain punch for recovery, ice punch to knock off those ground types, and knock off to knock off those baseballs. With a grass terror type to counter any ground weaknesses that might make it through that ice punch, and also to give him immune to the spores and the powders that uh, would give him sleep, paralysis, poison, etc., and knock him off of his game. Yeah, I think it's a really cool build. I like Ice Punch for coverage because obviously this thing gets destroyed by ground types. So having that to be able to kind of turn it around, it was a really smart idea. I, I love, first off, I love the Sandlot reference. It's amazing. <laughs> um, and then as well as uh, using Guard Dog as well, because I also went with that for my build. And like, it's just such a fun thing to have. Like I, I I know like these three, like their toxic chain ability is like really good, right? You really it's it's hard to pass it up. But then like using something like Guard Dog and like let's say if you do use it in the competitive meta, there's a lot of intimidates running around. So Guard Dog definitely helps out a lot with that. Yeah, and then the moveset, yeah, ice punch coverage, yeah, the knockoff for the item, but you know, for knocking off those items, and then poison jab for that double roll for the poisons. Uh, for the chance to poison, and then drain punch for sustainability. And then I think you said you ran an assault bus too. Yes, sir. Yeah. He's a so he's gonna be a bulky doggy. Oh, that's freaking so. Um, you say assault bus? Go also pair yep. with um the punching glove, which will be beneficial for your, your punch move. And with the guard dog ability, you'll be uh oh prevent from your attack getting you drop. I've got to admit, the poison jab was one on my on my radar. But I also saw that it got Poison Fang, so that's where I, wop I, I swapped in for. Um, um. But I like the uh, I like the idea of the Assault Vest because this way you can bolster your special defense in case someone gets in a quick hit uh, going against your weakness. It, you can at least shrug some of that off. And the Guard Dog angle, I uh, I like that. Because that's really going to help with your build with, since you can't be intimidated. But the other thing is like if you if you swap into, let's say you uh, you paired that up with Monkey Dory and you had a your baton passed into a boosted stat. You don't get that lowered either. You don't. Uh, you don't lose it for for getting uh, force swapped. Okay, so my monkey dory, I went with the guard dog ability for the item. This extra boat can be pretty useful for uh, super effective moves or physical damage. And then oh my uh, moves I I bought is thunder punch, drain punch, poison jab, and bulk up. And the terror pipe is poison. And then our EV spread is. 200 and attack, 108 and special defense, and 200 and speed, and it's adamant nature. 
I would love to learn more about like how you chose those. So like, um, especially like the Thunder Punch and the special defense. Can you tell us like more about why you made those choices? Because I've been watching like video where people would just uh, only double keep and bulk up. And using bulk up can be uh, make a survival ability and also hit harder too. Because there's a lot of physical attacker that people like to use can be uh, beneficial. Like who are you thinking of taking out with the Thunder Punch? Gyarados, Pokemon that are weak to uh, to electric type moves that can be a threat to Okie Dokie or to to my my other Pokemon that song and doubles. Yeah, that makes sense. Gar I didn't think of Gyarados, but Gyarados makes a lot of sense because it's both water and flying, and so it's super weak to intimidate too. So right. Well, yeah, I guess that could be a really good counter for Gyarados then, especially if you're thinking that your opponent is going to bring Gyarados in, then yeah, it would totally make sense to bring this Mon against it. And it would be pretty unexpected too, because they would be expecting to kind of destroy with Gyarados. <laughs> but if you could get off that Thunder Punch, <laughs> then maybe not. Right, fish for sale. Yeah, uh, it, what, once again, Guard Dog ability shows up, and I, lo and I love it. And yeah, I mean, the Thunder Punch totally like threw me off as well, too, a little bit. I wasn't expecting it, but then, you, you know what, like that's people wouldn't expect it kind of thing. So oh, Expert Bell for the super effective damage. That's right. That's right. That That's also another good one, too. And so definitely um, bulking up in its defenses a little bit. Plus, you have that bulk up as well. And then, yeah, I think making it a little bit more speedy with like a base out of like 80. While it's not it's, it's not like it's terrible or anything, but for a, for a Pokemon that you imagine to be like a, you know, slow bulk, like it's actually not too bad. Well, I want it to be faster than uh, some of the other Pokemon. Iron Hands, Iron Hands tend to be slow. I want to be faster nice. than Iron Hands, that way I could slide. Yep. Yeah, nice, nice. I totally understand where you're trying to outspeed some of the other threats in the tier. Um, and that actually makes a lot of sense for something that's built to be very physically aggressive. I think that's that's the good strategy. The Thunder Punch, and I keep going back to this, and I feel like a lot of uh, um, the podcasters here today are doing so, is I understand that it's very viable for your uh, flying coverage and not to like impose or anything, but what made you choose that over an ice type move that would pro uh, provide ground type and flying type coverage? Well, you gotta remember, I. I People often tend to use water Pokemon too, though. Like our bundle, my Rolodex, you know, there's a lot of water, good water Pokemon out there people use. Like our Shifu. Uh, so so you're, you're focusing more in the actual meta than just the weakness types that it has. Okay. that That's something that you might have a little bit more diverse knowledge and that I'm missing the point. That's why I didn't ask that question. Okay. I, I've been watching VGC and I've seen what people use. I have an idea what to cover. You know. See, now you have me wondering if I should work uh, Thunder Punch in this uh, mine somewhere. <laughs> I started Ice Punch. Ice Punch, I felt it's not as effective against, especially going against like Gyarados, like a no water type. I, I like the idea of the fact that with the Thunder Punch, not only is he giving himself coverage over flying types and water types, but that chance, I mean, it's a small chance, but it's still there. The chance to paralyze, which means that the opponent's speed is going to be cut in half, giving his his build a, a a better advantage for laying in some damage, especially with the expert belt. So I can I can kind of see where he was going with this. I do I do like the idea. I do like the concept and, and the um, the execution of what you're going for. So yeah, no, this this works to me. It's just awesome that, that at least to mention that that's coming with a better understanding of the meta. Because I focus my build solely on just covering the weaknesses that it has to overcome uh, random encounters, where you actually know exactly what the enemies are going to be. You know, that definitely increases the value of that build significantly. That's super interesting to me because I feel like I haven't fought, a aside from Urshifu, I feel like I haven't fought a lot of water Pokemon. So I am on Team Guard Dog for my Okidogi, which I nicknamed Okidoki, just because of what it's based on. <laughs> at least for his name the build is at least in terms of like the moveset is like very similar to like what x has or maybe it's actually exactly the same i know <laughs> with poison jab drain punch knock off and ice punch and then terra typing poison i was also thinking about terra typing dark as well to give a little bit of extra damage to knock off and just to like resist psychic since it's going to be four times weak against it yeah so that's another option but i left it as poison for my build uh, assault best item. 
And then I gave it a car careful nature to invest more into like that special. Pool. So I put the full 252 in special defense. I went to 248 in HP and then just put a little bit of uh, the rest of the points, the eight points into defense just to make it like super bulky. And then hopefully relying on someone to come in with like some kind of intimidate so I can get the attack up. And if that doesn't happen, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I like how you're thinking about Okidogi's weaknesses and trying to think of how to prepare for it. I know when I was trying to figure out like my fourth move on <laughs> Okidogi, I was doing the same thing. I was like, I gotta have something to deal with psychic types because, oh man, like psychic hits Okidogi so hard. See, that's where when I have to deal with the psychic types, just tell them like you would a bad dog. Knock it off. Just knock it <laughs> off. But uh, otherwise, what I'm thinking I wanted to suggest with the very similar move set that I'm working with is uh, try the stellar terror type. It would give you this, the boost. It wouldn't give you the defenses, but you definitely get an offensive boost on the diverse typing uh, move set that we're using. Stellar type. Kind of forgot about that. Ah, uh, nice. So I like it how you have a special setup. Make it more survival against special attacker since it's four type windows is sidekick. Like yeah, one shot and having one survival value will help it. the move coverage you have to me. Like I mentioned, I would uh, definitely suggest maybe a stellar type instead of just doing the poison, which only gives you an additional stab on one move, where stellar would give you that chance to use it on all three of, or four of your moves. Otherwise, I think it's very nice. The fact that you went more of a, a bulky special defensive build instead of going hard into the attack which is the way that I steered for this uh, move pool, is, is very interesting and different. Maybe it would make a good partner for Hercules. I like the fact that you brought in Drain Punch with this, simply because it'll get, that gives you sustainability with his already insanely high attack stat. That's going to keep you going for quite a bit. Um, the knockoff is nice, so you can get rid of anything that could potentially um, mess you up. And the Assault Vest, to, just to capitalize on, to, to bolster your uh, special defense is nice too. I like that. I, I I was thinking about that, but because of the way I, I went with my build, I couldn't, I wouldn't be able to do it. Mm. But uh, yeah, no, this is a nasty little thing waiting just to, to strike in. All right. So we have Barks with a Z <laughs> because he's Let. cool like that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it's about to get a little tricky up in here. Uh, he doesn't know Trick Room, but this Pokemon is definitely on a Trick Room team. So, he has the item Room Service, which is going to lower oh. his speed even further, but only when Trick Room is active. So I specifically picked this item because it only happens when Trick Room is activated. Um, his speed is kind of in the middle, so by having by having Room Service as the item instead of some of the other ones that lower speed, it's only going to happen when Trick Room is active, allowing him to potentially go twice before another Pokemon goes. Uh, the ability is Guard Dog, as everybody has, because it's just a really good ability. Intimidate kind of sucks, and this guy is an attacker, so we definitely need a way to not have Intimidate happen. Plus, I gave him the move Bulk Up, so I do not want him to be switched out. I want him to stay in with all his stat buffs, potentially even Intimidate stat buffs, um, so that he can do a whole bunch of things. Um, I gave him Drain Punch, so assuming at this point Trick Room has gone up by another Pokemon in my, my Doubled Battles team, he's gonna use Drain Punch if he got hurt to get some health back, got Poison Jab, um, and he's got Shadow Claw to deal with those nasty Psychic types that really, really hurt. Terror type Fairy, just for defensive reasons prevent it from getting killed to a lot of the things that it's weak to, maximized the HP and attack and gave it four for defense. It's nature ups attack and minus the speed because trick room. Love trick room builds. Oh my goodness. Like I, I love those. And then like I mentioned earlier too, like it speeds that right. It's kind of like in that region where it's like it's decently fast kind of and it's like decently slow kind of. So it's like you can go like either way on that point. And the fact that you're in trick room is like yes. And then, and then the, um, oh my god, the room service item. Oh man, I, I haven't, heard, I haven't heard of that item in so, like, in, in a while. Cause like, it's just one of those things where it's like, it makes that Pokemon more viable in Trick Room by lowering its speed by that much more. Yeah. And it only procs when you're in Trick Room. Cause like other moves, like, uh, or items like the, was it like the Iron Ball? It drops your speed in, in half already, like right off the bat, right? So it's like, or, or something like that. And then, uh, yeah, and then Drain Punch for some sustainability, bulk up, you know, get those defenses pumped in some more. And then 
poison jab because you know there we go the shadow claw for that psychic coverage so i didn't plus you do have that terror typing for the fairy as well to like uh ward off some more moves and just not being weak to like psychic too and i am overall trick run builds a plus for me so really love it this is a tricky little sheep uh, I, I really was not expecting something paired with trickery when I saw this thing stamets and all the dust it builds on it. So that's interesting. It'd be nice if room service triggered any time that it found itself in the twisted dimension as opposed to only triggering when the twisted dimension is put up. Because that way you'd be able to use that same idea in singles as well where something could set up trickery, parting shot or whatever out of there and then put this build out and then all of a sudden it gets that drop and it's ready to go. I think there's anything else that I could really add the the terror typing. This isn't really even something that I'd consider terror uh, in battle most cases so this is one of those things that I think it's just there to, uh, to do some significant damage kind of like you're doing and then uh, move on to the next thing. I have to admit I like the shadow claw um, idea of it. Um, but yeah, no, the room service item as well to, to take advantage of someone trying to uh, set up that trick room, basically just effectively setting up a trap for them. I, I do like this idea. I do like this build just because it, it gives you that, again, you've got that nice versatility, that pivot that you can that you can do on the fly if someone decides to change to flip the script on you. Okay, so my okie dokie um, is sporting the Rocky helmet just because I... I wanted to use the rocky helmet figuring if someone's gonna sh if someone's coming in for a physical attack make them pay for it and i used uh like i said before i had used poison fang as my as one of my moves because it not only would get stabbed but it also you know has that chance to cause poison and with toxic chain even better than flinch yeah i also give it body press because that move Ooh. is really just i don't think it's utilized as much as it should be and being the fact that its defense stat is pretty high to begin with at 115, I, I thought, you know, it's it would it just kind of a no-brainer for me to utilize that. But I'm also using this one more to help spread the, the, the toxic chain ability more than anything else. So I gave it Roar to force swap uh, Pokemon out, um, which would also help uh, prevent somebody from setting up. And howl to boost both you know my its attack stat as well as any partner pokemon that i've got out with it its stats i ran with was uh, 252 for the attack 252 for speed i dropped a little bit more the whatever was left for the defense and i made it a jolly nature because i wanted to capitalize on i wanted to push the speed more than anything else but and the terror typing i gave it was steel actually i wonder if hmm. it would make sense to go hp defense because you said you have body press, right? You did it. So one of the great things about body press is it uses your defense stat instead of your attack stat in the damage calculation. So by raising your defense stat for Okie Doki, if it had body press, not only are you more defensive, but you also would hit harder with body press. And especially if if you had bulk up on set, which did you have bulk up? I don't know if you did, but if no, you I did, no, howl. Because bulk up would raise your <laughs> defense. It, it would raise for both of your moves and your defense. So like that could be potentially crazy with body press. Oh, I didn't think about that. Yeah, that's a good thought. Oh, that's how I build my Corviknight. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm like, that's Corviknight right there. Iron defense and body press. <laughs> Finally, somebody chose Toxic Chains. <laughs> 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 It's not the best for the dog. I know. It's just that it's it's just like it's it's like for <laughs> Okie Dogi, like guard dog. Like it has its abilities are both good, right? Like you can go guard dog or toxic chain because like it depends on like how you're going for it, right? And like just just to see toxic chains out of this podcast recording, <laughs> it's just like okay, let's go finally. Otherwise, we'd all be team guard dog, which would also be okay. I do like the poison fang because it's like what you said. You have that double roads of possibly poison now, and then flinch as well and then it's, it's your stab the body press i do like that idea as well does body press get stabbed as well though or no i i'm not sure if it works that way either. body press would get stabbed because he's a fighting type oh, okay <laughs> so he would okay yeah. yeah so having that is already pretty neat i'm also kind of wondering if it gets uh what's that new steel move uh is it like hard press or something 
Um, if it can learn that move with that Terra Steel typing that you went for as well, I feel like that would be pretty. That would be pretty nuts too, you know. Um, but other than that, the, the fact that you made it a jolly nature too, like you 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 took that uh <laughs> that other half of the of its speed stat, right? Like going for like a more faster build compared to like Kayla's like Trick Room build, which I right. guess in a sense it makes it go faster in Trick Room. <laughs> But um, yeah, um, I really like that. And then Howl, I wasn't expecting Howl either. So I was like, Howl, yeah, different moves set up, and eh, which are. I love the body press thing, and I, I think I would just build on what Kayla was saying that uh, HP and uh, defense build and just body press. Um, if you build up the HP really high, like was mentioned by Gerhard, I uh, mentioned the heavy press, and that would be another viable thing if it could learn it. I don't know if it can, but it'd be a very interesting thing to go defensive to bulk up uh, for the attack and defense if you don't want to do pure defense. But no, I, it's a very interesting take to, to for this mod. Like most of these seem like uh, when you have sets of Pokemon like this, it almost seems like they have a, a certain cut path in the snow, so to speak. Where there's a certain way that you want to go, and I guess one of the whole points of this entire series on our channel here is the fact that uh, it proves that wrong. It proves that there's many creative and different ways that you can create these Pokemon, like you're demonstrating with this build. Look through, yeah, it does actually get hard press, which is the steel move that you were referring to, right, Gurren? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was yeah, looking at that, but it's it's contingent on the HP that the target has left. <laughs> oh. I thought so, it was yeah. Wait, has left or? Ha, oh yeah, 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 has left, has left. Yeah, yeah. yeah so the so, more HP, the more, more damage it does. So it it becomes weaker and weaker every time I use it. And, Whereas yeah. body press would get stronger and stronger if I if I make that sweep. Okay, yeah. and ring out. And so, so I actually had that backwards too. I had an understanding that as big as some uses HP as well. So I made the same mistake. But um, I mean, there were there were a couple ways you could have gone with it. Like we could we could go with this mon um just like monkey dory it has a, a nice array of physical attacking moves that would give you coverage on a lot what i found interesting is that it's weak to psychic but it has a lot of different potential psychic coverage um like shadow claw throat chop like there's there's a lot of different options and so i think like which one you pick for that is like really impactful on your build I saw Crunch in there. I was like, yeah, Crunch will work. <laughs> well, that's an interesting thing because even though it's fighting and poison type, these are all meant to be villains, which is dark type. That is that's why point. they have a lot of dark moves. And it just worked out that this thing happened to be significantly weak to psychic and dark, blah, 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 blah. Narratively, it all kind of worked out. And with that brings this episode to a close. What do you think about our builds? How would you train Okie Dogie? Let us know down below. Also be sure, like, subscribe, let us know how we're doing. Thank you X and Kayla for joining us today. Always a pleasure to have you guys on. Always a pleasure to be here. Yeah, thanks for having us. And as always, have a great day. Bye. Take Bye. off the top of the chain. Bye. <laughs> Good day.